You want to know if you can pop out. We're with you. So we're introducing our new engineer tracker, letting you know when we're heading your way. All part of British Gas Home Care Boiler Cover from just 40p a day. And now, enjoy a gift card worth up to £50 when you buy selected home care products online. When you're with British Gas, we're with you. Search British Gas Home Care. Hi everyone, thanks for joining this afternoon. Uh, my name's Emma and I lead the customer success function here at Locals. I'm joined this afternoon by Mike Burns. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, Mike's the Technology Innovation Manager for British Gas and we've been working together for probably about the last 18 months to improve customer experience on the day of their appointment and reduce um, appointment abort rates. In the next half an hour we're going to be discussing how we tackled the customer communication challenge and improved first time access. If you have any questions as we go through, please pop them in the chat channel and we'll come back to them at the end of the webinar. So, firstly, Mike, can I ask you, how did British Gas establish that communication was a big problem for you with, around first-time access? How were you driven by customer and engineer feedback? So, um, as, as you can imagine, it's really important for us and for our customers that we're able to complete the work we've arranged for them. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, business that we use the solution, um, it... Um, we were getting there to do services and repairs on, on critical equipment, but the gas heating or the electrical equipment. Um, we know from customer feedback and personal experience that waiting in for an engineer is really frustrating. So communicating effectively with customers is really vital. It's also inefficient for us if our engineer arrives and the customer's not there. Mm -hmm. um, historically, we've encouraged our engineers to call customers um, mm -hmm. and let them know that they're on their way. Uh, but we found this is not only an extra task for the engineer, um, it also, customers find it odd uh, receiving a call from a strange mobile or from a yeah. withheld number and uh, quite often won't bother answering the phone so they don't get the, the message that the engineer is on the way to them. Mm -hmm. um, so we were really keen to investigate better ways to communicate with customers. Um, as an added bonus for us, um, safety is really important for us. So we have a global ban on use of phones in cars, um, even with hands-free. So there's... A level of frustration for our engineers when they've already let a customer know that they're on their way um, but then get delayed in traffic mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the benefit of customers being able to see that an engineer is still on the way to them um, even if we're a bit delayed um, takes away that frustration for the engineer and, and the risk of arriving to a, a disappointing customer when they get there absolutely i can imagine and and for you as as a business what are the key drivers for improving first-time access rates yeah, so as I mentioned, the frustration of customers so that mm. ultimately affects their uh, propensity to be new with us and, and to buy more products with us. Um, but the real thing is the inefficiency for our workforce. So if we get there and the customer's not there, we've got to make a call as to whether the engineer waits uh, for the customer to arrive, uh, whether we try and reschedule them to another job. If we do that, then we might need to delay another customer's job because mm. we've sent them there. Um, we've always got to go back generally to the customer that's not there, so that all throws our extra out of the schedule for another day. Um, so even really keeping our engineering workforce productive mm -hmm. relies on the customer being there when we get to the premise. Um, we also get quite a few calls from customers just asking, where's my engineer? <laughs> um, so keeping them informed earlier means we get less of those calls, which means that call centre can spend more, more time answering other customers' queries. Cool, absolutely. It sounds like, um, well, it sounds like quite a big challenge managing. Very much so. Yeah. Um, so why why did you guys choose to work with locals? Um, so locals' experience with other businesses, both in the UK and worldwide, uh, was really important to us. We could see how the technology had been used, and we could see how other companies had got benefits from it mm -hmm. already. Um, having spent time with locales, um, we saw the flexible approach and the willingness to fully understand what our issue was, how our engineers wanted the solution to work, how our customers wanted to, to see the solution and work with us to integrate it into our other solutions. Um, and then looking into the future, um, you know, it, it was really important that we had a, a long term partner, if you like. Um, where we could get benefit not only from our ideas, but locales' ideas, but also locales' other customers' ideas. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if, if we were looking at other solutions, we, we'd limit our opportunity really for improvements in the future. Absolutely. Uh, so, 
I'm just trying to think back. It was. It feels like a while ago now. But if we think back to the very first time that we implemented that into the field, um, I think it was a handful of engineers that were using it down in South Wales. We started with just on my way communication uh, for customers and some real time tracking. What sort of data and feedback was the most useful uh, for driving innovation throughout the trial? Yeah, you're right. So it was quite a small, close knit group of engineers in South Wales and. Getting, being able to get face to face with them, being able to get near real time feedback mm. from them on the solution and how they were using it um, was really key. So a WhatsApp group was was <laughs> uh, very active during the, the first, yeah. first stages of the proof of concept. Um, but also we, we really encouraged our engineers that were using it to talk to their customers when they got there, mm -hmm. um, to share that it was a new solution, share that it was a new way of working, get their feedback and then share that back to us. Um, we did some uh, customer insight questionnaires after the, the, the sessions and got, got some feedback that way. Um, but it was really uh, great that we didn't fall into the trap of assuming what our engineers and what our customers wanted and really engaging with them to let them know that they were driving and designing the solution as we went along. Absolutely. I mean, from my perspective, I'm always talking to people about how important agile innovation and agile delivery is. Uh, I think when you when you start with innovation in an office and you go with a bit of a top-down approach, you can sometimes you know re-engineer the wheel in, in some respects. When actually you can start with something really simple and, and build a really great solution driven by the people who are actually going to end up using it, which is always really valuable. So how what sort of impact does that have on engineers? What sort of challenges are you typically faced with when you implement out in the field? Um, so we have a very, very diverse population of engineers from our, our, our new starters um, all the way up to, to lifetime and living retirement and different demographics within mm -hmm. those that have different propensities to accept technology yeah. and in different ways of working. Um, but what we have seen is that particularly with the solution um, where an engineer starts using it for the first time, they stick with it, which is yeah. a really good endorsement of it. And, and we've used organic growth and those engineers to encourage the use throughout their teams. Um, but by engaging with them, getting, making sure they understand that the app has been built through feedback from the engineers themselves, so they can see it, they're more likely to get out there and try it, and then once they've tried it, it it's easier. Um, we did have some reluctance in areas, uh, particularly around the fact that customers could see where they were. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we did have to do some, um, some really clear comms with them uh, around how the tracking worked, um, and the engineer was truly in control of when customers could see them mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that resolved those conflicts. Absolutely. And um, so again, if we go back to back to the beginning, there's plenty of plenty of areas where if we could do it again, we'd probably do it slightly differently. What are the sorts of lessons learned that you share to someone else who's you know embarking on this change? Um, yeah, so just being open and honest with the people that are using and helping you with the solution. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure that they're fully engaged and they fully understand what and why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, people will instinctively see change as something that's difficult for them and something that's being done to them um, rather than being part of it and, and just being upfront and honest and sharing with them really engages them into it. Um, traditionally, our, our teams are used to waiting for a solution until it's near perfect when we deploy it to them. Um, so it's taken a long time to build it, to get it out there, and then the realisation comes that it's actually not as perfect as mm -hmm. we thought it would be. Um, at least doing it in the agile way that we did with this solution, um, we can share with them that we know it's not going to be perfect when they first see it, yeah. but that gives them the opportunity to try it, get some benefit from it and didn't tell us what would rumours they'd like to see. Mm -hmm. And then we can very quickly deliver those changes so, so they can see that they're adding value to it. Absolutely. And do you think that um, having engineers be able to give feedback and see changes in applications, you know, as we're going through a delivery process, do you think that works for them? Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. They, although it's a change in mindset for them from being giving something that's complete, mm -hmm. you know, and the feeling of getting something that isn't quite finished, um, but once they understand why that is and what yeah. opportunity it gives them, they are keen. Absolutely. And did you consider it to be um, a risk to, you know, to customer sentiment or MPS when we started the trial? Um, not really. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a basic customer expectation out there around um, deliveries, mm -hmm. you know, their parcels, their pizzas, and, and their expectation is that we're doing these kind of things with them. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that work was a little bit embarrassing. Uh, it's more of a hygiene factor than something really technology innovating, mm -hmm. um, and we really needed to get it there. The, the customers were just, they just expected this is how we should be communicating with them.
Absolutely. And it's something we talk about at Locals quite a lot is how, you know, the experience of customers in one sector rubs off on, you know, customers' expectations across the board. I know, for instance, I'm an avid Amazon Prime user. And, you know, if you can't deliver to me this, that sort of speed, then it really, with that kind of transparency, it really impacts the, the way I feel about your brand and the service. Um, so overall, since, you know, we've scaled across your um, large population of engineers, what are the kind of benefits that you're seeing from this now? Um, so, you know, we talked about first time access, and mm -hmm. that's really important, and we are getting into more customers' homes first time yeah. because we're communicating better with them. Um, we do have a net promoter score that we ask our customers for, there's a specific question in there um, around where you're contacted by the engineer before your visit, mm -hmm. uh, and where engineers are using the app we've seen a higher response rate to that, that they are getting those contacts. So we know that the messages are getting through to the customers. Fantastic. And because of those, we get more access. Yeah, absolutely, sounds great. So let's think about the future. What's the, what's the next challenge for you guys? Um, so, you know, Locals has, has proved the value in, in the way engineers use it and the way customers uh, receive it. There's more we can do uh, across our business now. Mm -hmm. So we're only using it in one part of our business. We've got other brands. Um, our dyno brand, our, our heating installations business, um, where we can now scale this across those other businesses so that customers, because we do have customers that are, are customers of different both brands, so they're getting the same uh, customer experience no matter which part of the business they're working with. Yeah. Um, there's also some other enhancements that we can do with, with, with the product and we're looking into, which is where we can give customers even more notice and, and earlier information around when we're likely to be with them. Mm -hmm. So rather than giving them a a specific time right at the last minute, which is great to make sure we're there, giving them earlier a forecasted time when we're going to be with them um, will make it even easier for them to plan their life around us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sounds really great. So uh, for you guys who are all on the webinar, we are just going to be showing you a quick video just to introduce you to Locals Field Services for a little bit more context about some of the things that we're talking about today. In the Field Services app, the technician can simply log in to see their jobs for the day. When the technician is off duty, they can switch off tracking in one easy step. The technician can view both the order details and map to help them do their job. When the technician is on their way to the next job, they just tap to notify the customer. Operations staff can see job status updates in real time. They can also track the location of any technicians. The technician can use the preset routing application to navigate to the customer's destination. This triggers an automated message to the customer with an accurate ETA. Customers can reply to the SMS which is routed to the technician facilitating two-way communication when required. The customer can also track the field technician until they arrive and be in control of their day. When the technician leaves the job, an automated feedback request is sent to the customer.
Locals, enabling you to thrive in the eye economy. Great, so we have some time to answer some questions. So if you have any, please pop them into the chat. Having a look through now. So the first question I can see, uh, how long did the pilot take? Oh, how long did the pilot take? Um, so all in all, we, we, we took about three months over yeah. it, but within that, uh, that process, there's a number of iterations of the app. So mm -hmm. uh, there's some things that the, uh, the engineers head back very quickly um, that would be beneficial to them. Yeah. And uh, we could, uh, it was great that we both helped how we could add those quickly, get them out there, retest those. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a number of iterations through those. Those Absolutely. Ones. Yeah, and one of the features that was included in the video, so the, the reply to the technician or reply to engineer in your case, that was that was one of the things that we developed from feedback from the guys out in the field, which was great. Um, and then I think ooh, there's a follow up question around scaling up. So I think actually the scale up because we integrated some of our technology into one of your existing workflow apps. I think that was six six weeks. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, uh, yeah, the three, four sprints um, to get there. Absolutely. Uh, what percentage of increase on your RFT KPI did it have? Um, so I can talk about the uh, the POC. So from the POC, we had the really confined trial and we were able to, to do it. We saw a 16% increase in access rate. Mm -hmm. um, which obviously for us is quite significant and rolled out across the country. That's uh, uh, that's a lot of extra customers we're getting to see first time. Yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Have we got? Yeah. Yeah. Is there, there's a question here that's is there any information about reducing percentage of inbound calls? Yeah. No, we haven't. We haven't got that data as yet. Um, we we're only just into. It's quite hard to. Uh, filter out which calls are coming in and why, um, so we've not quite got that data yet. <laughs> I imagine you get quite a lot of calls every yeah. day. Absolutely. So let's have a look at the next question. Um, what was the first step of forming the project with locals? What information was needed to get started? Oh, right, yeah. Um, so um, we had an introduction to locals from a, a, a mutual partner, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, and uh, it was really about an, uh, like an innovation session, really, and we talked mm -hmm. about how local, what locals could bring to British Gas and, and how it could benefit us. Um, and as I said, you know, the uh, the locale solution and, and the the ideas behind it are really a hygiene factor for for, for our customers. You know, it's something mm -hmm. they expect. Um, so once we did that and, and, and worked with locales on the POC. Um, that really demonstrates the benefits for us and, and, and made it valuable to uh, work further with them. Absolutely. I mean, from our perspective at Locals, um, we, as you've seen from the video, we have a fleet of field service apps which are ready to go. And, you know, we can normally set up a POC within a couple of weeks, um, demonstrating that agile development and agile implementation we talked about earlier. Um, it's really just a case of providing data and getting that set up. It's really quick into market so that you can start to kind of get the benefits and see see what the impact on your users and your customers are. Uh, so the next question is, can we get a copy of the webinar to share with colleagues? Absolutely. We will be sending it out to you once we have finished. Uh, let's have a look for the next one. Tell us about integration or automation options so the engineer may not have to manually trigger the notification to the customer. Oh, so this one's interesting. So we have a number of automation options um, which can be built around things like time delay and geographic location. So the way that we work at Locals is we geofence um, the destination location, so where the customer has booked their appointment for, so typically their home in this particular use case. Um, so when we notice that a technician or an engineer is leaving the current customer's geofence, so where they're currently working, we can automate messages off the back of that or automate workflow steps because we've noticed that they've left a particular geographic area. Um, we can also, once they have entered the geofence for the next customer, we can then automatically notify the customer that their engineer is arriving now. Um, for, for things like time delay notifications, those are equally useful. So we can, you know, as you've seen, we typically send out 15 minute ETAs. So your engineer will be with you between three and 3.15. Um, we're always calculating how far away your engineer is in the background because in our customer portal, 
there's a there's a live tracker so your engineer is 13 12 11 five minutes away if we notice that your technician is going to be later than we originally thought they would be um we can also then automate you know further customer communications to notify them of that so really the customer the customer journey that you'd like to craft i suppose is completely configurable down to how you would like your technicians or engineers to one interact with the product um so from an app perspective and, and two kind of how much communication you'd like your customers to have the options are, are really quite and they're not endless nothing's endless um but there's quite a lot of options there's lots of things to do there uh so we've got another question what was the change in access rates when this was implemented so i think you covered so that one. yeah so yeah. on the proof of concept it's 16 percent and, and we're hoping to see a, a similar number um, at scale Wow. Uh, so let's have another look. Is the system integrated with your own internal database? Um, yeah. So, so we we had a customer information app that we already had delivered to the engineers, which contains all of our customers, um, and uh, we integrated that app with the locales SDK um, to provide the information to locales to carry out their notification process. Mm. Let's have a look at the next question. How do the engineers feel about having two places to update their activity, or is the locals app the only place that indicate their status? Um, so we we don't use the locals app uh, with its full levels of functionality. We only use the notifications linked into our customer info app. So it doesn't need to get in integration, and it was one of the things that was fed back in the proof of concept. We really need this to be triggered from our existing solutions. Um, so that was why we took that approach, so that they don't have to update it in two places. Uh, for us, we we can replace existing technician apps with um, our own apps, or we can also provide integration, like we have done for British Gas through SDKs and APIs, so that they don't have to keep updating their their jobs data in multiple places, because that can be one of the big barriers to usage for anything. If you've got to do something twice, you're not going to do it, right? Um, so one of the next questions is why did you not build it yourselves yeah great great question and, and one we did ask ourselves um we could have um the, some of our other applications and, and other solutions we do um however what we lose by doing that is what i talked about earlier of getting the benefit of locales experience and other customers of locales experience um, we would have tended to deliver a solution and then it would never move forward if we built it ourselves um, we value the partnership with locales and their, the feedback from their other customers to, mm -hmm. to drive what we do forward. Um, and that's where the value comes, not just from the solution. Absolutely. And I know from you know experience of working with other customers and you know in previous places where I've worked, sometimes when you get to the end of an innovation project, that, that very much is the end of the project. Um, when you're working with you know product providers and, and software as a service platforms, the innovation continues Absolutely. and you can benefit from that. Um, so, does this work for your subcontractor engineers? Um, it can do, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no reason why it can't. Um, the great thing is because it's bring your own device. Um, but for us, in some of our subcontractors, and this can work on any platform for us. So anywhere we deliver it, um, we can use it. And uh, you know, Dino is one of our franchise businesses, um, and that's an area we will be pushing it into. Fantastic. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, where traffic prevents appointment schedule being met, so I'm assuming this is ETA accuracy. How how do we deal with that? So from a from a local's perspective, there are two ways that we deal with it. One is whenever we send out an ETA, which is a 15 minute appointment window, we provide the customer a link to track their engineer in real time. With the tracking map, where you can see your engineer moving down the street to you, you're also presented with um, a countdown timer of how many minutes away they are. And this is real time accurate, so it takes into account things like roadworks and traffic situations and whether or not they've, they've had to stop. Um, so we actually calculate the live ETA every 10 seconds and present that to the customer. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the uh, features that we also have is time delay notifications. So as we've calculated or as we're constantly calculating where the engineer is and how long they're going to be until they get to their customer, um, if we notice that there's been a significant lapse beyond the end of their ETA window, we can you know, further notify the customer to say, engineer is unfortunately delayed, they will be another 15 minutes. So I think we have time for one more question and we'll go with, can this be integrated with a core scheduling system? Absolutely, the integration point for uh, customer data is entirely the choice of our client. 
um, there isn't any problem integrating with core scheduling systems. In fact, we have, and a number of our clients worked um, with, a, with a whole suite of scheduling systems. One of the ones that we've worked with before, I think about Click, um, not a problem at all. Fantastic. So we are just about to run out of time. I would like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Uh, and thank you for the questions. I had some really good questions there. Uh, if you do have any questions or you would like to follow up with anything at all, anything that we talked about this afternoon, please do feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, have a lovely afternoon. and Thank you for joining. <laughs>